What is up today? Everybody, welcome to the RT Clinic. Today I'm kind of going sideways because I have a special experiment that I'm going to do uh, to see what changes happen to available oxygen and exhale CO2 under this mask and other masks. So I've got some cool tools and we're going to see if it changes. Cut to that intro. Calibrated my first oxygen analyzer here at 20.9. So it's calibrated. I put the low at 15. Hopefully it doesn't go that low. And of course, here's our oxygen analyzer right here. Let's turn this on. I'm not going to monitor my pulse oximetry during this because pulse oximetry is really hard to get to go down because it's looking at kind of your blood levels, but I want to look at more of what's available for me to breathe right here kind of in my face. So, so now that I have my oxygen sensor calibrated 20.9 and I'm running myself on capnography, you're going to see that right now. It's running about 41, kind of choppy while I'm talking, but we're going to say 39 to 41. Um, I must eat too many carbs today for breakfast or something. So, um, let's hook this, let's hook up a large BiPAP mask. So some things you're going to notice about this, these are specifically made to, they have an anti-asphyxiation valve on them. And what that is, there's a little flap inside of there so that if flow stops, that flap closes off this part right here and they're allowed to breathe through those holes as you can see right there. So when the air is going through, that flap goes up over top of those holes and they're deliver the pressure, but that's the anti-asphyxiation valve. It's a really nice aspect of it. Well, I'm going to check it. First of all, let's try to do it with the valve functional. So I'm using a respiratory therapist best friend, which is a rubber adapter. So let's put this thing on. I don't have to take my glasses off, but I'm going to for this situation. Hey, a really nice thing to do, just on a side note, when you're setting these up with a patient, make sure you show them, after you set it up, how to open it up. Because if you ever wore one before, you kind of feel like you're trapped. So have them put their hand up here and show them how to eject these things. It'll help your patients quite a bit. Well appreciated. Now I'm going to try something a little different here. I'm going to actually take this oxygen analyzer and stick it up into the mask with me. Might get a better reading at that point. Alright, just for quality control now, let's take everything out here. Watch our. Whew. I'll keep breathing through this dude. Looks like our available oxygen is starting to go back up here. Of course, it's outside, so we started at 20.9. I think it was down to 15 at one point inside of there, so um, I couldn't physically, I couldn't feel that. Um, it does feel like, you know, it's a little difficult to breathe, 
Uh, I don't have any lung disorders, so it's really hard to judge uh, what it would feel like to a patient with lung disorder. But yeah, the amount of oxygen inside of there does decrease. Uh, the amount of available oxygen does decrease during those times because I think that mask tends to hold a lot of what you exhale and then you end up re-inhaling quite a bit of it. So uh, the amount of available oxygen goes down. Is it enough to cause a difference? I don't know. Uh, we could calculate that out to make, to make a PaO2 level. Uh, maybe I'll do that uh, here in a second. I'll see what that percentage is and, and see the estimated available PaO2 because that's really where the rubber hits the road, how much PO, PaO2 is available in those cases. So it does have an anti-asphyxiation valve on it, but I mean, it does, you rebreathe quite a bit of, and it's not necessarily, I didn't get a change in rebreathing my CO2, which a lot of people focus on. I think the amount of available oxygen goes down because uh, I have a higher, I'm exhaling. For one, when you exhale, it's you're exhaling about 18%. So when you exhale, there is a lower PaO2 that you're exhaling. That's the mixing in your airways. But... A lot of that's collecting in here and I'm re-inhaling that lower FiO2 type uh, type air so I'm not able to get any more in um, or have what I would have on room air. So uh, we'll calculate that out and see what that comes out to be. Uh, I saw I'm 15, 16. I'm going to run with 17 because I think that kind of jumped a little bit with some breaths and you saw it dropped really fast at one point. So, um, But I, I'm going to go with what it was when the the oxygen analyzer was up under the mask with me because I think that's probably most accurate. Uh, so let's get to the board and do a little bit of that stuff. Let's do the math real quick on amount of available oxygen. So let's do it here on the board. So P big AO2 equals PB minus 47 times FiO2 and then um, minus PaCO2. So I'll write this on the board. I kind of had like a little bit of a lapse of memory. So what did I go back to? If you haven't seen these yet, this is the respiratory clinic card that goes on my on the badge. It's a badge buddy and it works so well. On one side I have oxygenation stuff and values and the other side is ventilation. So if you're interested in one of these, please let me know. Uh, I'll probably be selling them uh, sometime in the, in the near future, and I'll get you a close-up of them here in a second. So, looked up and I verified, yes, it is 1.25. So, this is our normal. Let's just figure this up for um, C level, 760 minus 47. And we started at 20.9 minus my CO2. My exhale CO2 initially was like 41, so I'm just going to add 5 to that. Actually, I'll add like, let's add 3 to it. I'll just keep the same amount. I'll add 3 to it um, because I'm going to have a little bit of difference in those. So let's say my XM was 43, still with a normal range. And then we multiply that out. So let's take the world's biggest calculator here um, and figure that up real quick. Ninety-five two six seven. Okay, that's what we started off with. So ninety-five point two six seven. That's a ballpark for it. So let's go over here and figure up um, what it was when I was rebreathing some of that. She wasn't rebreathing much CO two. I was actually CO two remained the same. But what's going to change is the amount of FiO2. So let's refigure that for a different FiO2. So we know this is 95.267. Let's change this right here. And we're going to make this, uh, let's make it 0.17 to see what kind of difference it makes going forward. So 760 minus 47 is 713. We know that times 0.17 equals 121 and our CO2 is about the same it might have went down a little bit let's say it went down to about 35 so it went down to 35 that's going to change that number there so this is 121.1.21 minus 
uh, 35 times 1.25 equals 43. Okay, this is going to be a pretty significant change, I think. 43.75. So, at that point, under that mask, I, was, I had a 77 available oxygen for me to breathe, 0.6. Now, um, this is available down at my, at my alveoli. This is not available for me to breathe out here. But you can see there is a difference between these two. And that's a pretty significant difference. Actually, I'd see it 90, 95 to 77. This is super unscientific, but it's just a way I'm using some respiratory equipment to look at some different things. So let's do another experiment. So my second experiment is going to be something real special that I know you've all seen before. It's the classic non-rebreather mask not plugged into oxygen. So the patient with the mask on, totally deflated, reservoir, possibly two one-way valves in place. This might suck. I'm going to tell you that right now. So let's get started with it. You can look at my initial numbers. They look like my XL CO2 is 37 while I'm sitting here talking. So we're going to roll with that. We'll go three points under that. So we'll make it about actually three points above that, we'll make a 40. So that's really good. We'll look at 40 for my arterial as a ballpark. And then we have a measured oxygen in this room of 21 exactly percent. So let's put the mask on and have some fun. First of all, non-rebreather. I'm going to have to take my glasses off because this is going to be a lot of, a lot going on here. Okay, well, I think I have a slight advantage here because of the beard, because I'll be able to get a little bit around the beard. If I was a smooth face, we might have some trouble. Okay, I feel like that's on pretty well. For my exhale CO2, let's start with that, so I'll just keep breathing. We're going to see if my exhale CO2 goes up, so let's just, I'll just breathe here for a minute or two, and we'll Speed it up a little bit so you can see if it changes. So obviously measuring exhale CO2 is not an exact science. You're going to see some... Oh, it says I'm not breathing right now. So, you're going to see some changes in it, and as, as we did in this situation, you're going to see changes from 38 to 45. We're really looking for consistency in this, and consistency in it going up. So, it's not a perfect science at all. It's more of a trending tool, like almost all of um, all vital signs are. Let's do this now, and then put the oxygen analyzer under as well. Oh boy, that's a lot under there. So, <laughs> so, you got to see what happened there. It's very similar to the last one. A matter of available oxygen just went down. I mean, you, that, you would guess that would happen. I really had a tough time keeping a seal with the bottom of this, so I held my hands around it. Remember, these one-way valves allow you to exhale out, but you can't take air in. So I was seeping some air in around the corners. That ability to get room air in does help to increase that FiO2 a little bit to keep it from going too low. I'm thinking it was really close to 17 at one point on there and now it's popped back up. As you can see, it's about 20 something. So, 
you can see that available oxygen does go down so my PaO2 likely went down inside my inside my alveoli just because I didn't have much available now is 77 gonna cause any problems with me no because I have healthy lungs and I can compensate for it but people without healthy lungs that that being of a PaO2 change 95 to 77 can make a big difference if you're looking at PF ratios on ventilators or whatnot it's almost 20 difference it can make a really big deal, especially if they're having difficulty or they're really low and they're having difficulty oxygenating their tissues. So those are a couple different ones. I'm going to try one more um, by special request. I don't know if it'll change at all, but let's give it a shot. The classic ear loop mask. I don't think this is going to make changes at all. I know there's a lot of stuff that people have done um, to make it look like there's to make changes and whatnot, but I don't think it's going to change that much. But Let's just give it a shot. Capnography on. Bingo. So we've kind of seen that one of the bigger things that you're going to notice with this is that the CO2 doesn't really change. And think about CO2, it's a super, it's a fraction of the air we breathe. So your 38.38 um, millimeters of mercury is a small, a minute amount in the large 760 millimeters of mercury that we're breathing at room air. So it's a very small amount. Now it's way smaller the amount you inhale because it's a it's less than one percent of the total air we breathe so um we've seen some changes in this but not much so let me breathe on this a little bit and then we'll do the oxygen test also so let's get started One thing I do notice here, even though there's a long exhalation, you see this plateauing really nice. That's exactly what you want to see. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of changes in CO2, which I didn't really expect to either. Let's look at amount of available oxygen. So I'm going from right now 20.4, 20.3, and I'm going to go under the mask. It's going to change. I know that for sure but I don't think by enough. So my CO2 remained pretty much the same, but my my available oxygen go down. Let's just do the final part of this experiment. Let's just put this by my mouth. Without anything on. So about 18.5-ish, that's interesting. So about a, maybe a 1%, maybe 1% to 2% difference, lower amount of oxygen underneath something, just because anything we have, it's going to cause a reservoir for what we're exhaling. So it's just something interesting to look at. Uh, comment below if you got comments, um, and I will see you in the next video. Later.